in this lecture now we discuss the semi group generated by the heat equation now we begin formally the discussion on uh, evolution equations that we mentioned in the uh, introduction so we'll discuss uh, one by one the heat equation the wave equation and schrodinger equation uh, before i <coughs> start the discussion on heat equation i thought of uh, <coughs> uh, making a few remarks uh, again on semi group theory uh, so these are important uh, of course i have not uh, covered many topics so i wanted to leave this also but some of felt uh, it's important that i should uh, say something about these three remarks okay so now uh, some remarks so again on uh, uh, semi groups so the first one is uh, with regard to inhomogeneous abstract cauchy problem so namely this ode in a banach space so now we are adding uh, an inhomogeneous term uh, and u0 is in x so if a generates a strongly continuous semi group so now this f is from 0 infinity into the banach space okay so with suitable conditions on uh, continuity differentiability whatever is needed okay if uh, a generates a strongly continuous semi group t t so then we can write down the solution of this inhomogeneous equation uh, then u of t is uh, t t of x and 0 to t t of t minus s okay so for x in domain of a so this is nothing but duhamel's principle okay so this is the first remark and the second one concerns with dual semi group in fact we need this in the proof of stone's theorem <coughs> so let me the easier one uh, first let uh, let T T B A. So let me now stress that strong continuity B A uh, strongly continuous semi group in a Hilbert space. so the advantage of working in a hilbert space is that the dual operators so these are all tt's are bounded linear operators on h so the duals <coughs> uh, 
the edge joint not dual the edge joint operator is also defined on the Hilbert space. Okay. Then you consider this family uh, of edge joint operators. Uh, the family of adjoint operators T star T ok. So, this so here I am just T star T is nothing but the adjoint of So, it is easy to check that the T star T satisfy the uh, semi group property, there is no uh, trouble with that, but what is important is that this T star T. So, this is T star T is also a strongly continuous semi group. So, let me say this is H continuous semi group uh, in H and its generator is a star where so <coughs> a is the generator of t t ok so in other words in a hilbert space if we have uh, a strongly continuous semi group T T, then the uh, family of adjoint operators also forms a strongly continuous semi group and its generator is nothing but the adjoint of the uh, generator of the semi group we started. Okay. So, this <coughs> so of course, this is not an easy proposition. So, one has to do some work and the only advantage here is that T star T is also defined on H. Okay. So, the in the general Banach space this is also true, but to some modification. So, that is what I uh, now remark. So, let T T be a strongly continuous semi group. semi group uh, in a Banach space uh, x with generator a. So, let me write that. Okay. Now, the family of a adjoint operators adjoint operators T star T but now this is in B x star. So, they are defined on the dual space x star is the dual space. So, obviously, there is no trouble with semi group property again, but there is in general in general T star T is only 
weak torque continuous. Uh, so, we lose this strong continuity. Okay. So, strong continuity means what? So, norm of T T x minus x tends to 0 as T tends to 0 for all x that is strong continuity. But in this case we have only weak star continuity weak star continuity that is so let me just say that. So, if uh, <coughs> this is the duality bracket between x star and x. So, you have this t star t you take an x star in the dual space minus x star. So, this is the duality bracket between x star and x and this tends to 0 as t tends to 0 plus for all x star in the dual space and x in the original Banach space. Okay. And this gives, so I will not uh, further emphasize, so this uh, generator so, of T star T again that is defined only in the sense of weak star topology. Okay. So, call it T e star. So, this is weakly closed, weak star closed and this D A star is also weak star dense. So, in case of strong continuity we have seen that d a is uh, strongly dense, but here we can only say that. Okay. So, this is the general situation, but everything is fine once we put extra conditions on uh, x. So, if x is reflexive there is absolutely no problem. So, x is reflexive then T star T is again uh, a strongly continuous semi group. Continuous semi group with generator S star. So, now a star is a closed operator in x star and its uh, domain is also dense in x star, but that requires uh, x to be reflexive. So, just to reflect this thing, so here is an example. Okay, so, now you consider this x L 1 r. So, we identify, so this is not a reflexive Banach space. So, we identify its dual with L infinity r right? and consider this semi group of left translations consider T t. Now, it is in fact, it is a group. Okay, so, no problem. So, T t of f at x. So, this is f of x plus t. So, f is in L 1 of r. So, x is in r, t is in r. So, we have seen earlier that this is a strongly continuous semi group. So, its generator is the derivative. Okay, so, that is. So, what about uh, the adjoint uh, in fact group? This is it's a group. <coughs> so, adjoint uh, 
okay head joints now are defined on x star that is l infinity r so you can easily check that so this is at f of x minus t okay so this f is in l infinity r and x t r n r okay so you can check that check that t star t is only weak star continuum. Okay. In fact, uh, there exists f in L infinity such that this L infinity norm uh, minus t minus f so, this in L infinity does not go to 0. Okay. So, for example, you can try this. Okay. In fact, very nice functions f of x equal to sin of x square. So, this is a continuous bounded function. Check whether this <coughs> this does not hold. Okay. So, and the third remark, these are all important topics, but unfortunately no time to discuss. So, the third remark is con concerning holomorphic or analytic. semi groups. So, this is a special class of semi groups. So, I am not going to define <coughs> what that is that will take much more time. I just say that the so if you start with T T. So, this is only defined for T non negative that is on the positive axis. So, when we can extend the definition of T t to a small wedge in the complex plane that will result in holomorphic semi group. One important property I would like to uh, say about this holomorphic semi groups and in fact, the semi group generated by the heat equation has this property. So, we have seen that. So, if T t is a strongly continuous semi group. So, if x is in d a then T t of x is also in d a for all t non negative and we have this relation a of T t x is equal to T t of a x. So, in general for x in just in the Banach space. So, we cannot claim that T T x belongs to D A. Okay. So, but for uh, holomorphic semi groups that is what happens for x. So, this T T x may not for T positive. Okay. So, for holomorphic semi groups so that is what happens for holomorphic. So, they are in fact characterized by this one of the characterization holomorphic semi groups uh, we have T T of x belongs to D A for all t positive and x in x that is important. Okay. So, in the <coughs> application to PDE what this means is 
the solution is smooth uh, for T positive and that is what we have seen in the case of uh, heat equation. Okay. So, with these remarks now I move on to this heat equation. Okay, so, this is d u by d t. Uh, so, assume we have absorbed all the constants arising the heat equation in t. So, this is in x in R n and t positive and with some initial condition. So, at least in the case when f is bounded and continuous, we have seen uh, this is classical thing the solution when, okay, when f is smooth. So, let me write that way the <coughs> smooth and bounded. The solution is given by the uh, Fourier Poisson formula. So, if you have not seen it refer to our book on PD that is classical theory Fourier Poisson. So, u of x t. So, let me just write that. So, this k t convolution with f at x. So, this is t positive and x is in R. So, k t is the Gaussian <coughs> uh, or fundamental solution of the heat equation. Okay, so, where k t of x 4 pi t minus n by 2 e to the okay, let me write, minus mod x square by 4 t. So, this is for t positive. So, this <coughs> u satisfy the heat equation and u also satisfies the initial condition in the sense of limit. So, that at t tends to 0 u x tends to f x at least when f is smooth. Okay. So, now <coughs> we take this at the starting step and define this semi group. So, this is the semi group generated by the heat equation. Okay. So, define so let me use a different letter W uh, in L P R L. So, So, again 1 is less than equal to p less than infinity by. So, w t acting on a function f in L p. So, we have to mention what its value at x is. So, this is precisely given by k t. So, this is for t positive and x is in R n and we put w 0 of f equal to f. Okay. So, this for f in 
L P R N. Okay. So, two important properties we constantly use about K T is that K T is a positive function and uh, integral K T x d x uh, in R n. Okay, so, let me so, even if I forget to write, so in this lecture I have in the discussion on heat equation it is over R n. Okay. In fact, all the equations we de only deal with in R n. So, this is k t x minus y t x. So, here for all y and this is again k t x minus y d y this is for all x all are equal to 1 and for t positive. So, in fact, this k t is in the swan space. Okay. <coughs> so, the first proposition that is the e somewhat easier one. W t is a <coughs> strongly continuous uh, contraction semigroup. So, that is the first proposition. Okay. So, let me give some details. So, that uh, you also <coughs> start working with more examples. Okay. So, first let us <coughs> uh, prove the semi group property. So, that is somewhat easier semi group property. So, if you take T 1 T 2 positive, then this W T 1 of W T 2 F, F is in L p. So, this is by definition. So, K T 1 star K T 2 star F. And by associativity, so this is k t 1 star k t 2 star f. And here comes an interesting property of the heat kernel. So, you can, so this since this belong to uh, Swan's class, we can use Fourier transform to compute this uh, convolution and you find that <coughs> this is precisely k t 1 plus and that is by definition e w t 1 plus t 2 f. Okay. So, this is for all f in l. Okay. So, next the strong continuity So, next let f in L p R n. So, we have this w t f at x is k t star f. So, let me write that. Uh, Okay, let me not write that. So, that is let me not write that. So, 
So, k t star m. Okay, you write that integral and other things. So, you take the absolute value okay, and then you want power p. Okay, so, this is precisely integral k t x minus y uh, f of y to the power p d y. Okay. So, when p is equal to 1, this is almost immediate and uh, for uh, p bigger than 1, you use uh, Holder's inequality. Okay, so, this is less than equal. And now, you integrate with respect to <coughs> integrate both sides. So, with respect to x x and use for winning. So, in order to get that W T F in L P is less than or equal to. So, here we are using constantly these two properties, okay. So, that especially the integral k t is positive. So, we do not have to put any absolute value there and integral k t is 1. So, that is uh, very important. So, this immediately shows that W t maps L p to L p R n okay, and norm of. So, it is continuous. So, that is the first step. Okay. So, it remains to show that. So, next, next is uh, strong continuity. Okay, so, this is bit delicate. So, let me continue this in the next lecture. Okay, thank you.